there we go. You want to say hello? Hello. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. I'm making a video whilst I'm with my family and the boys wanted to be in the video, which is unusual, I know. And I wanted to say hello. Do you want to say Happy New Year as well? No? Okay. Do you want to go and play? Okay. okay. Are you going to play or are you staying? Play. Okay. The other side of my life and a big part of it as well. I wanted to make a New Year's message, but I'm also with my family. And before I went off to record, we said, why not just record it with us all together? So as a gift of seeing an insight to the other side of my life for everybody that I, I feel you are all friends and acquaintances, then this is my family life here. Before I start, a few months ago, I asked for your help and I launched a project with the team here called 2000 Strong. And we said within there that we hope by New Year's Day that 2000 of you would volunteer to raise $100 each and fundraise, donate, however that's going to be, share what you have. And the grand total of that would have been $200,000 which would allow us to build phase one of the new village for the special needs children. That phase one would have provided a home for 100 children in crisis. And up to now, for all we have not made our goal of 200,000, I must say an enormous thank you. And I think we should all give ourselves a congratulations as well for we reached a goal of $83,000. Uh, that was the sum total up to now, including offline donations. That means that we are well on our way and we will have one of the first houses, the first structures built in the coming days, in the coming weeks, I should say. And this will provide immediate access for children that you have seen here, who are among the most marginalized, forgotten and ostracized children in our human story. These children will find a loving, safe and family home to the best of our human capacity and they do not have parents and so we must find a solution for that. They don't have the blessing that my children have. And so I feel, as men and women in this world, we are obligated to find a solution. Interestingly, this ties into what I wanted to say here because here, this community has gathered around a message of great love and off the back of gathering that energy together, we have found a solution for these children. When this village is finished, it will provide a loving home for 500 children in crisis. That can cover the whole nation if I opened offices in every region. And that means that a whole country on this planet, right here, right now, of special needs children, will have a fighting chance, a solution, an opportunity to live a life of comfort and love. And the fact is, however difficult that fact is to accept, that I have met children that have never known a single day of love and kindness in this world until the day they are found. And so this is an absolutely life-changing event for humanity and for these children, of course, more importantly, and for the nation of Tanzania. When we have a solution for the whole country, we will then expand as I pray every day, because wherever there are developing nations, there have to be children like this. And so I pray every day that we build these villages all around the world. So thank you for making that possible. Absolutely phenomenal outcome. Beyond there, I want to share a New Year's message. And I want to share the simple truths of God, for the truth of God is very simple. I sit here with my family. I sit here with my sons and you hear often I speak from a space of being the awareness and not the roles in the world. And it is still true. I am their father. But before I was their father, I am the awareness that is aware I am their father. And when I can reside in that space, you can reside in the place Yeshua asked us to, 
where unless you forget the roles of the world, unless you forget your mother, your father, your husband, your wife, your so on and so forth, you cannot follow him. Unless the roles of the world come secondary to the awareness, unless the awareness comes as the foundation within you and what you do, you can't bring that love. You can't continue with the motivation to love people in this world without connecting to that. And it makes me a better father. I am their father, but I'm aware I'm their father. And that means I know that my core fundamental nature is the awareness, which is untouchable. It is untouched by the world. It is unwounded by the world. It is unscathed by the world. And when I can rest there, I rest in a space of absolute healing and health inside of my heart. And there I can bring that healing and health and that love and compassion that is known in that part of us that the world has not touched, that awareness that we are, forward into the roles that I partake in in the world, such as building this family out in East Africa, a family that God asked me to build. And that leads me to the space where God asks us to do things. For when we connect to that awareness, we realize God loves us, God forgives us, God knows us, and wants us to be his son or daughter. This new year, God wants you to go to God and say, what would you have of my life? God is tired of you going to God and saying, this is what I'm doing, help me to do it. You are not the one in control. Your body belongs to the will of unconditioned love. And the voice of God, that space of that awareness, that is accessed by grace. God loves you no matter what. There's nothing you can do. You can't pursue it. It's very simple. You move to that space behind the roles of the world and you accept through grace, through God's love alone, that supernatural position, that supernatural transformation, that you are a son and a daughter of God. You are loved, you are forgiven, and it has all been done for you. All you have to do is stop searching, seeking, pursuing, and accept it here and now. It's there for you. You must receive it. You can't receive it as the self. You can't receive it as a role. It is received when the roles are quiet. And there the process happens naturally of its own occurrence. When you connect to that awareness that in this human sitting here, who is John and their father, and I am aware I am John, I'm aware that I'm their father, so therefore I know my core nature. I am aware in that space, I meet God in the generous heart of God through grace. It's not through any work I've done. It's not through any pursuit, any spiritual practice. It's not through flicking any supernatural switch. It's purely through the love of God. Now, when you connect to there, God guides. And when God guides, God will lead you to do something different in the world, perhaps. It may not be phenomenally different. You may be driving your bus, seeing to a patient, dealing with a customer whatever it may be, and all of a sudden, because you are making space for the presence of God outside of self, you are untangling from the roles and connecting to that still inner place where God speaks, may, Spirit may ask you to do something. And you may move and you may say, okay, I will do what you have asked, and you'll say the right thing to the right person, or you'll offer the right thing to the right person as you go about your everyday life. And here you bring forward the love of God into your story, the will of unconditioned love into your human story. By grace, you are there in awareness, and in that awareness, you hear the guiding light, and in faith, you follow that guiding light. And when you follow that guiding light, works will be born. And works are not something that you need to access God, but they are born from the heart that knows God, for faith without works is dead. It's a guarantee. And so all of this boils down to accessing awareness. And as it says, for you must die and Christ be born within you. Christ is the space inside the awareness is where Christ is born. That is it, that is the rebirth. For you must die, but your heart must continue to beat. It is only the entanglement of roles in thought that must subdue for a time so that the love of Christ can be born through you and you can come back to these roles like a father and love them more intensely. So going into this new year, remember to find that awareness so you know the presence of God. And there you will know love 
that far supersedes any human love, any mind-based love, any conditional love. That love will allow you to forgive and we must go into the new year with forgiveness for all that has gone on, no matter what. No matter what. Because it's like taking acid from a person and putting it in your body and hoping that it hurts that person. The anger, the unforgiveness, everything you hold in you for another is only a punishment, a self-emotional punishment for you. It only corrodes you. It doesn't hurt them. It doesn't touch them. You are the one falling victim to that pollution, that trick of the devil to make you lack a heart of forgiveness. And I know, I know many of us have been scathed and wounded and hurt and it's hard. But don't forgive them for them. Forgive them because you love you and you don't want to keep this acid inside of you corroding you any longer. You deserve to forgive these people. You deserve it. Even if you can't see that they deserve it. But the reality is that you're all like children here. We all arrive in this world which is very contorted and very polluted by certain forces and we don't have a rule book and so most of us don't know what on earth we are doing but if we keep our hearts open we stand a chance of living well here happy here peaceful here and so i guess this was my new year's message the truth of god is is very simple it's very simple you may have other problems. Let's quickly look at the simplicity of it all. There I've touched grace, which is knowing the presence of God through no effort other than thought going away. It's as simple as that. You surrender before God. You stop trying to do it through the self. The self which is separated from all things. I'm going to analyze this. I'm going to analyze that. Creating an analyzer and subjective analysis. Creating a separation from you in the creation field of God's heart, which you are. And so by grace you accept that space where you are loved and forgiven by God. The guidance comes, you follow that, and that guidance will lead you to works, whatever those works look like. It's very simplistic. You may ask, what about these other teachings of non-duality, etc.? That encapsulates it all. You may ask, what about the sacred secretion? It's just a tool. It's just a tool that when the human who recognizes that the self cannot be trusted to to trust the power and the presence of spirit and the gifts and the toolbox of spirit that the secretion will be switched on in a human by the true Christ. For Christ is not the secretion, Christ is the presence you meet when the secretion is active and the secretion can be activated by that which is going on in the cosmos and the, the workings of the world and the, and the moon or it can be activated by God and God's will. It doesn't need to be only at a certain time of the month, I assure you of that. And therefore you need not know anything about it. You need only know grace and compassion. When you move to that space, you will recognize it. How will you recognize it? Because the worldly behaviors that you once enjoyed, your movies filled with violence and gore, they'll become absolutely repulsive to you. It's one of the greatest ways we all indulge in entertainment. You'll see it, it becomes repulsive to you. Your sin becomes abhorrent to you. Your worldly attachments become repulsive and you push them away. And there you start to move in the presence of the Holy One, the presence of God, the higher mind, which is what the secretion gives us. But you can have the higher mind without knowing a single thing about the secretion, of course. As you can drive your car, you need to know how the car works. You need to know how you function well here and now in compassion, not what's going on inside your body. You need to know how to fine tune your compassionate action in this world and let God take care of the autonomic systems such as the secretion within you. It's not your business. You as the awareness have no control. Your business is in your actions, right compassionate action, in having an open heart. You may say, I can't do this because the world has me chained to my sin, my, my worldly pursuits, my addictions. I'm taking the precious substance of vitality and life which is a gift from creation, from God's heart. And instead of storing that up to live out the will and desires of the will of unconditioned love in Christ for my life, I'm burning it up for temporary pleasure and sensory experience. Well, then you must discipline. It's very simple. If you are hooked on certain behaviors and they are, you are exchanging the gift of vitality from God for short-term pleasure, you must discipline your body. 
you need to fast, you need to correct it, you need to exercise strength. It's like resistance training. Every time you say no to a temptation, your muscle gets stronger. Your muscle gets stronger and soon you take great joy resisting it. You feel empowered, you feel strong as you look down on these, on these sins and temptations that once destroyed you, that were once ruining you. And you feel elevated and powerful as you look down and say, not today. Not today, for I stand in God now. I stand as a warrior. I don't stand with this any longer. I am no longer uh, exchanging the gift of the vitality of creation in my life for this empty box of pleasure. I'm taking this full box of love, joy, wonder, magic, synchronicity, manifestation, power, vitality, strength, uh, compassion, uh, wisdom, I'm taking that box, not the empty box of short-term pleasure and enslavement to the technologies or the vices that are making me go there. So if you're hooked to the world, let them be. Discipline it. It's as simple as that. And if you are so far out that you say, but I feel miserable and tired and depressed because of how far away I am, then know that God is with you as you go through that thorny, bumpy, uncomfortable journey back to the guarantee of God's love and peace and it will take a little time but if you sit alone long enough and you reject all of the behaviors that you know you are exchanging the vitality given to you as a gift to manifest the will of God in this world to manifest something beautiful in this world for short-term pleasure if you sit alone you take a two or three week holiday and just sit still and say no to it and use it as training. As each vice comes up, you say no and let it go. You will begin to see the new you being born and you will see the great joy of this world. And you will see that these notions of boredom and, and the need for your impulses to be satiated, they just fade back to what they are. Just programs of the flesh that have no necessity in your life. And this is the simple truth. You see, the simple truth, the, the, the simple truth of God is this. By grace, you can know God's presence. God loves you, forgives you by that grace. In faith, you can follow when you anchor in that space, the guiding light of God. That will lead you to works, whatever they may look like. It may be just a regular, normal life as you are living, because many of us are tied to that with family. But just that right word to be said to the right person to completely change their day and, and elevate their heart may be the work God calls on you to do. But many here in this community, we have works here, guys, which shows that we have grace and we have faith. Because we have been tasked by God to deal with a completely whole country of special needs children. For whatever reason, through no egoic promotion here, God has positioned this human organism and the awareness within it to be a voice, the loudest voice on the planet for the special needs children of Tanzania. And he has gathered all of you here together with us in this message of love. We have this. We have grace, faith and works going on inside of this community on a massive scale. And it's magical. And I hope that you find it in your individual lives as well as many of you clearly are or you wouldn't be making possible what is happening here together with us. And so that's my simple message this new year. It's all you need. You need to know how to live compassionately here and now. You need to know how to overcome your fear. I guess I should add that in. For where is fear? Fear is born in thought. Every fear starts with a thought. I'm not talking about standing in front of a lion and being worried and running away. That's a very clever response. I'm talking about fear that stops you from following the guidance of God. Fear that stops you from living well. Fear that makes you afraid of your community. Fear that, that, that makes you abandon faith. Psychological fear, fear inside your mind. It all starts with thought. And therefore, be still and know that I am God, that inner still place must be found. And it can't be found by an identity based in thought. And so fear is overcome by true grace. 
put in true grace, a psychological, a, a, a mental stillness which is natural overcomes you. For there you have moved your mind into the heart and you will live by the heart. All you meet will be loved, rather than judged by the mind. It's really not complicated. It's really quite simple. So long as you can make that first step to realize that however valuable this is to who I am as a man, that before this and before any identity I constructed around this, my core nature was awareness. And that awareness is where God speaks. That, is awareness, that awareness is where the mind goes still. That awareness is where fear goes. That awareness is where you get discipline over the impulses of the body. That awareness is the truth. It is the presence of God here and now in your life. And it is where that love that we all need to share with ourselves, our families and those around us is born. It's the love of God. So just ask yourself that. This new year, have you asked God what God wants to do with your life? Or have you got your own plans and desires and you're telling God to help you to manifest them? If you are in the latter, examine the self that is telling God what you will do with what belongs to God. Happy New Year. Thank you to everyone who has made this start for our new village possible. And I am confident this community will continue to share the message to share the plight of these children and to make possible the security of their future and the safety and the loving family home that we aim to manifest for them. God bless guys. Happy New Year. You can have it all Every part of my Take this life and breathe on This heart that is now yours You can have it all, Lord Every part of my world Take this life and breathe on This heart that is now yours